John, you did your mission in Japan. Is that correct? That is correct. And that seems like a pretty cush mission assignment, (laughs) you know, because I always think about, like, there are guys who sign up for the military and they get stationed in Hawaii, and then there are other guys who get have to go to Afghanistan yeah, and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. it's like I, I would much rather <laughs> exactly. spend my time in Hawaii than Afghanistan, like as a as an enlisted person. Yeah. And I, I don't know what's on the list for missions, but I feel like Japan is a pretty pretty sweet I was, deal. I, it was a it was a sweet deal. I I think the only reason. I, I didn't look down on it. I was actually gunning for I wanted the like the real experience. I wanted to join as a lot of my father called it the Brown Spot Club, mm-hmm. where you go to like a third world country and you have an accident on a bus where you can't make it to a bathroom in time. They, mm. they called that the Brown Spot Club. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it was almost inevitable. My my older brother went to El Salvador, which was even worse than Chile where my dad went, and you know, had plenty of stories of Losing his having bowel movements in sure. unexpected places. So, well, I mean, you have a, a, a deadly combo <laughs> of a diet you're not ready yep, for, yep. pretty rough roads, yeah. not not a lot of good suspension in some of those buses. So That's when a I combo. got when I got yeah, but but <laughs> I did study Japanese in high school, so I was like, okay, that's the connection there. I, I'm glad, but I you know. It was the first time living in a, an apartment with I never had seen a cockroach before, and we they mm. had cockroaches a plenty and really? rats. Oh yeah, because you don't always have the top notch living mm-hmm. you know, quarters, and I, I didn't have it rough. But you're going everywhere on a bicycle, and we had our fair share of adventures. And I thought I do remember thinking, man, everything here is glowing and it talks to you. The toilets, the traffic signs, everything is futuristic except for their medical system which ah. was you go you didn't want to go to a, a, a hospital you did all you could to avoid being admitted cuz i knew of a couple of these other missionaries who like got hit by a car and and they would just tell horror stories about these <laughs> d- japanese doctors or er guys really? who didn't know exactly i mean I'm sure it's better now, but you know, <laughs> then so. they were like, oh, they didn't know about anesthesiology as well. So as much. So they like <laughs> screaming in pain while they're ripping, wow. you know, the pants off these broken, mangled, you know, legs from a car accident or, you know, moments like that, or, or it smelled weird in there and in the <laughs> hospitals. And it just wasn't the same. Uh, luckily, I didn't really have to frequent the hospitals, but there was a little bit of that element. But no, it, it was cushy. You were there for cushy. a year? Two years. Is that the wow. average length yeah. of a mission? Yeah. And is it a like, full-time gig? You head out every Monday morning? Yep, yep. You you go and uh, you have your schedule and you get up at a six thirty in the morning. Get to bed by ten thirty and then uh, and you're out there. You're just out all day long. And, and uh, is it to spread the good news? Spread the good news. You and serve. are you going like door to door? Sometimes in Japan, a lot more than you would probably like the states because you know you're not getting as much reception. I mean, you know, in Japan where it's you know primarily, you know, I guess the biggest being Buddhism and Shintoism. Um, and so you're not getting as much reception. So yeah, a lot of t- your times is a lot of your time is spent doing the typical going door to door, going on the streets and stopping people. It's extremely ineffective, but it's fun. <laughs> and it, you learn Japanese very quickly that way. Really? Oh yeah. Like you know the phrase get off my lawn in Japanese. <laughs> 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 uh, really? <laughs> oh yeah. How you still do you still speak it? I mean, it's it's more slow to remembrance, but uh, yeah, it's still there. Well, give it's us still. some phrases like what they would yell at you, good or bad. You know, if they want you to leave or. Oh, dame it. desu, moi desu, Buddhist desu, uh, jinge kusai. That was a bad one I said, but um, what else? Like, uh, like isogashi, isogashi. That's like I'm busy, no time for this. Mm-hmm. She's out a lot, huh? Uh, I'm, 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 it's already to be rude, but I'm going to be rude. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, I like oh, yeah. that one. Yeah. Um, That's nice. You get yeah, the, you get the sa- yeah, I, I really thought, that. you know, you've heard about the salaryman or the, the salaryman. Yes. 
No, and I haven't. The salary men were uh, like the Japanese businessmen in their suits and ties coming. I mean, like clockwork, you know, coming off the trains, walking home to their houses. They're all kind of mostly 50% plastered and very ruby and red yes. um, from having to drink with their you know bosses and their uh, coworkers. Oh, because and they have the enzyme and they... Can, they Asian turn, glow. they flush out yeah, when, they, and they, when so, they drink. Yeah, so it was very, you know, a lot of good interactions with them, I, which we knew was. I got dick tapped by one in Tokyo. Oh, you know, really? you got yes. dick tap. Oh, like when someone whaps your wiener, you oh, know? Was, yeah, that's pretty Chinese much what it sounds app. like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's just like a dick tap. Yeah, it's a, new, it it's a new app. Yeah, dick tap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a, is, that, is that a light version of fraucherism? I don't know what that is, but it sounds fun. public touching of. I think oneself or others, I, I know is I basically invented in Japanese trains. This felt like a bar, you know, a bar goof. But yeah, yeah one of the salaried men in like a khaki suit who was just like blacked out, hammered. Thought it'd be funny to dick tap. Yeah, they'll dick the, tap, yeah. The American <laughs> Really? Guy. Yeah, and I was like, what the fuck? Did you get hit in the wang, you know? And I was kind of pissed, but he was so drunk. I was like, I'm just going to sort of remove my... I don't know if it's culturally appropriate to dick tap him back. I don't know where we, you know, the rules... It here. was an right. invitation, yeah. I feel like. Yeah, you didn't go all Terry Crews and drop a dime on him? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I waited till this show to do it. Let's take him down. But on the walk home, I remember there was guys like passed out in suits, like on bus stops that were those guys. They yeah. weren't homeless guys. They were yeah. salarymen. And they were so they're they calling were salarymen. I've never heard of this. And yeah. I think if they don't have families and they're single, they'll they'll sort of like just sleep on the street till 8 a.m. and then go back to the that office. I, yeah, that I don't know. Because I, I mean, saw guys sleeping. You know, yeah. like with the briefcase. Like, oh, oh my gosh, British. that's wow. the thing. They, that's why they started making those hotels with the uh, with the little drawers over the beds, where you can like get inside of basically oh, a basically giant just fit your drawer, body. Yeah. and then yeah. they push you back in. And it's like I slept in a, one of those. Yeah, the uh, the little honeycomb hotels. Yeah. <laughs> real cute, real cute, <laughs> very, very cozy. It's the pod. It was convenient. Yeah, I don't two know. years. Were you? Eating all Japanese food and everything, or yeah. were you freaked yeah, out by like raw fish and no, all that was diet stuff? oh no, I had, I luckily I had a, a a liking of sushi. My mm -hmm. dad, you know, would make it actually often. Really, um, yeah, but it was certainly where I opened up my taste buds and uh, and tried. Your dad would do home sushi. Yeah, he was stationed in. Uh, he was in the uh, military when he was a doctor, and so he was stationed in Japan for a couple of years before oh. I was born. So I think there was like a fun connection. Like there was, you know, all this Japanese like decor and furniture in our house growing up. And oh, really? I think that's why I took it in high school. I was like, oh, there's like a Japanese connection here. And then I got to go there. And so kind of like rounded it out. And it was, it was great. I loved it. And, and you're my, from the Northwest. So you got like the yeah. salmon, the fresh salmon. Tons of fish. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure that explained my love of fish. Ah. I was able to handle that. Uh, yeah. Jesus, I couldn't imagine how horrible a Japanese student I would have been in high school. Like, <laughs> like Spanish was a bridge too far yeah. <laughs> for me linguistically. I don't think I could have come close to I mean, to everything you learn in three years, it all is thrown out the door in your first week there. You're like, oh, <laughs> I think it prepped me. I, I was able to learn how to write and read two of their alphabets. And that was that was the good I got out of it, which you know gave me a little bit of a head start on reading like where this train is going. Okay, I at least know it's headed to Ikebukuro. Uh, <laughs> now you know enough to get by. Yeah. Say that wow. uh, like Napoleon Dynamite. Ikebukuro, Pakistan. Shit. Pakistan. 